Welcome back again. Um, in this exercise, we're going to continue with the previous uh, random division, and then we're going to build uh, some paneling techniques and look at deconstructing bonding representation, uh, boundary representation geometry, and uh, other types of uh, geometry manipulation. Uh, so I'm going to extract one of these surfaces that I have gotten from the division. And we're actually going to spend some time on building kind of a custom panel construction on this panel. And then we're going to apply it to the overall surface that we have. Um, so I'm going to load this up into uh, Grasshopper first and switch to perspectival view so that we can work more in 3D. So this is the original surface. I'm going to hide it. Uh, it could be any type of shape, but basically um, this surface, we can use the information on it to drive some sort of geometry manipulation. So uh, if you deconstruct the boundary representation, uh, because this is a quad panel, so it's made out of four vertices, it will give you the face, the edges, and the vertices. And you can use this information to extract any type of data you want out of this. So for instance, uh, for the vertices, we can actually uh, specify list item. List item is located under sets list and we can go through the vertices and uh, basically uh, extract any type of uh, value at that index. So the first point it seems to be at the bottom left corner then it's going in the counterclockwise the first uh, index second item is here third item is here and fourth item is over there. So we can extract each individual point. We can also extract individual lines. So let's say this is the third line. The first line is bottom uh, at the bottom. Second one is on the right. Third one is on top. The fourth one is on the left. So it's also going counterclockwise. Um, so what I want to do uh, in this exercise is uh, define some sort of a panel. So that panel uh, could be in any type of geometry or form. And uh, for this exercise, I'm going to uh, basically evaluate a point between these edges. Uh, so uh, imagining, so I take this edge, the zero index edge, and then the, the second index. So I'm going to evaluate some point at these locations. So I'm going to do evaluate curve, and I get these curves. You can also reparameterize the evaluation and then evaluate the midpoint. Let's start by uh, evaluating the midpoint. But you can see that the evaluation actually extracts a kind of a interpolated data between this point and that point. And I'm going to do the same in the opposite direction. Uh, but you can see that when I move these points around, the panel is getting in a different uh, shape. Basically. Um, these values do not correspond with each other because uh, this line, the bottom line is going from left to right and the top line is going from right to left. So I need to subtract uh, this value from one so that those two values would correspond with each other. So now you can see that they will always be parallel. So they will move uh, side by side. And the rest is pretty straightforward actually. I can just Take these, uh, take these points, move them some value in the Z direction and do the same for the other point as well. And we can control the height of this uh, value. And then I'm going to uh, basically um, draw a line between these points. So we can say draw a line like that. And there are a bunch of ways we can actually um, close this panel. So we could say that uh, maybe this is going to be our um, kind of an opening. So maybe we want to close it one side or the other. Uh, I can actually uh, extract another edge. And that edge could be, uh, let's see. Let's, let's look at the sides. Let's say we want to extract the third edge. And I want to uh, basically combine these uh, these panels with each other. Um, so there, there are a bunch of ways of combining these. Of course, the obvious one would be lofting. So if I loft these two with each other, 
um, I'm getting this sort of uh, combination. It's basically we need to flip one side or the other so we can start developing some three-dimensional geometry. And then uh, the issue with this sort of geometry manipulation is um, you need to actually be careful with um, combining this type of lofted data. So it, towards the end, um, if we do this to multiple uh, surfaces, let's actually grab multiple surfaces and try to run this uh, data manipulation to all of them simultaneously. Because at the end, we're going to actually run this on our surface and we want this to be working with multiple surfaces. So if I right click here and choose set multiple surfaces and feed three surfaces this time, um, it's actually working quite fine. Uh, but sometimes, depending on how you treat this data, you can see that um, it, it actually lofted them one to one, which is fine. Uh, but you can always add another V function here and feed these in. And that will couple up the geometry you want to be lofted with each other so you can feed in one single information. This is always a lot better when you uh, think about it. Uh, one last thing we can do is maybe we can close the bottom and the top corners with triangles. So I was, uh, I was thinking of maybe this could be kind of like a triangular prism with one uh, side of the roof being open so that could act like a panel and we can do that by uh, basically extracting these uh, remaining edges uh, one of them is going to be um, actually those going to be the zero and one these two and we can extrude them to these moved points so if I do extrude to point so I get this edge and I can extrude it to this point. I'll close this bottom corner and I'll do the same thing to the other edge. So this top edge, I'll extrude it to the uh, top corner. So it's essentially my panel is these three things combined, right? So this part is going to be open. So I can uh, just feed those in as surfaces and I can do a V-Rep join and that will give me these panels, individual panels. Now we could actually add one more trick to this, which is the extrusion. So you know that we have a, have a flat surface and we are extruding um, it by a uniform thickness, which is one. But we can actually extract the area value from these surfaces, which are different. And the area values are going from 0 0.7 to 5.4. So imagine if we divided these values by 10. And this could give me individual values for the Z extrusion. And uh, be careful that here the data is coming in uh, clusters, right? So it's coming in lists. And here the data is uniform. It's the same. And we need to match this data uh, type to this data type. So that's why we need to graft it here. If I combine it now, you will see that the areas that are greater, they would extrude more. So if I decrease the, um, decrease the division, you will see that type of difference. So the more area we have, the higher extrusion we would get. And uh, this could be the panel that we want to have actually. So I can plug this in to the existing surfaces that we have and let's see how it's going to work. Um, so I'm going to, let's see here, the data is grafted. Um, it was already working fine with multiple reference surfaces. So technically I can flatten this list and feed this up and let's see how it will work. And there you go. So uh, basically these surfaces, I'm going to hide them and hide this surface information as well. Let's see, hide this guy too. And let's hide these two. So you can see uh, each surface patch is being extruded in relationship to its area. So I can, uh, I can control how much height I want here. I can make them really flat actually. So if I increase the division threshold here, they would be a lot more planar. So the smaller surfaces, they would extrude really less. And for the others, they could extrude a lot more. So essentially, 
um, let's see this is the kind of surface effect that I got so from this side you can see that it's showing some panels from this side it's completely open and um, one problem though that I'm seeing is uh, there's I mean of course they're stacking on top of each other right so this is the top panel this is the bottom panel and the smallest ones they probably don't need to be extruded so technically we could do some uh, some sort of pre-filtering here so we could do some smaller or larger than we can check for its area and uh, we can uh, we can actually uh, maybe do different types of paneling options for different sets of panels by checking the areas uh, so that if the panel is too small maybe we don't extrude it if the panel is too large we extrude it so those types of divisions we could probably do and um, this is obviously giving us that type of an option um, so again let's um, recap what we have done in the first part we uh, grabbed an overall surface and then we subdivided it into random uh, portions and then I developed um, a paneling technique by deconstructing the surface and working with its edges and points and moving them in one direction and then um, basically lofting and closing these patches and I tried to do this in 2D so I'm, my movement was in the vertical direction uh, but in the future we might be able to do this uh, more geometry specific so imagine if we have a curved uh, surface we might want to extract the normals of the surface to move uh, these extrusions as well uh, but for now generating something like this could be done in the uh, in the XY plane and then we can lift it up and uh, in the final phase I combined the extrusion value with the area calculation so that if the panel is too large it extrudes more and vice versa um, so I, I hope you like this exercise uh, it basically covers kind of the essentials of dividing a surface in, with custom domains and how you can work with uh, the extracted surfaces and some of the geometries that are anchored on them and um, thanks for watching